Hi, this is Professor CC19. And as you know, other than the Candy Crush walkthrough videos I have on my channel, I like to make special extra videos, usually marble races and tournaments, that I make using a program on my computer called Algadoo. And today, and in the video, which is part two of this, which will probably come out tomorrow, I'm going to be giving a tutorial on how you can acquire Algadoo and how you can use it for yourself to build marble races. Now, this is a two-part video. The first part here is going to be explaining how you can um, use all the tools that you can see here along the left side of your screen and what these files and folders represent along the top left. So um, this first part is an introduction to the different elements. In part two, tomorrow, we're actually going to be making a marble race. All right, so this is kind of a crash course in how you can get and use Algadoo. I hope this helps you. I hope you get Algadoo and check it out for yourself because it is really fun and satisfying to make things and watch them work if you have made them well. So I'm going to zoom out here. I'm going to show you this. This is one of the first courses I have made. It's very similar. Actually, it is the exact same thing I use in the Amazing Algadoo Marble Race Part 1. And it has a lot of different elements that I've acquired over the past few months. But first off, I'm going to explain the basics. How do you get Algadoo? Well, it's simple. Just search it in any search engine, Google, Chrome, uh, Yahoo, anything. Uh, search Algadoo, A-L-G-O-D-O-O, -O -O, and it will bring you to um, the list of things that match your search. Usually the very first one is the Algadoo homepage. And once you're on that page, all you have to do is scroll down to where it says download for PC, download for Mac, um, choose the device that you want to download it on, basically the one that you are searching that on, hit download, wait till it loads, and open it on your computer. It's that simple. That's how you can get Algadoo. It's absolutely free. And um, then once you have it, you click to open it, and it will give you some um, tutorials automatically built into it just for an introduction. Here, if I click on one of these folders, I'll scroll down a bit to show you. You'll probably see things like this. They're built into the game Algadoo Play, Quick Tour, Quick Tour Touch, how you can learn the basics of the course. But um, this video is basically coming from someone who has already seen these things and learned them, learned how to use them. So, um, that's how you get Algadoo, and now I'm going to show you what all these buttons and tools along the left side of your screen mean. The first one is the one on the top left, the very top, and it's a white page that has a top right corner folded. It says New Scene. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to give me a list of options. Um, choose the palette of your new scene. That's just fancy talk for what is the background going to look like. You can make it blue. Um, you can make it white on black or black on white. You can make your items look different by choosing optics or x-ray, blueprint or chalkboard. I just like to go with default. It's a standard blue background, green ground, and that's what you can go on. Now the thing right below the white piece of paper, this black slate here, says save and share your scene. Once you've built a scene, which I am teaching you to do now, you can um, save it to your scenes, your file, and if you enter a description, you can actually share it to Algbo um, pardon me, Al Algabox, which I will explain in a sec. Anyway, this empty folder right below it says My Scenes. If I click on it, you'll see it's just the scenes that you have created. Some marble races, you can see the Battle of the Virtues course, and some other things. That's the empty folder. And like I said a minute ago, Algabox. If you click on this folder with a globe on it, you will see this. And basically, this is the um, built-into-the-game method of you being able to share your scenes with other users. So once you have made a scene, you enter a description and you hit share, which is this button, and you will see enter. You can share it to Algabox, which is this. This is all the scenes made by all the people, and they share them publicly. It's like a mini version of YouTube, only a bit more outdated. 
You can search by keywords in the title of the scene you're searching for. As you can see, there's a lot of different things made with the game, not just marble races. Or you can search based on who has made it. I don't use this very much. It goes fairly slowly, and I choose to use YouTube as well. I think it has a bit of more of a broad base. Underneath the folder with the globe is this folder with the red car, and that's all the components, the elements that you have to use on your scenes. And I'll explain how to get them in a moment. You can see some of the things from the Battle of the Virtues and a lot of the elements I use in my races, along with the marbles themselves. And this bottom folder here with a picture in it is the lessons. Little tutorials you can get on everything that I am showing in this video. This is just a bit more compact. So those are the folders on the top left. Now on the bottom left we have all these things here. Some are yellow, some are blue, some are green. They're all tools that you could use to make race courses. And I'm going to explain them in stages based on how you're, you're most likely to use them. The blue ones come first. They are to make objects. The yellow ones are next. Those are to edit and shape objects. And the green ones are more complex things that you can add later. The first thing that we have is the brush tool which um, basically is like a paintbrush, only you click instead of paint. So it brings up a circle, and if you click, um, you just click, it'll produce a circle of any color. If you click and hold it and then move your mouse, you can use it as a paintbrush. And then finally, if you click, hit shift on your computer, hold shift down, and then move your mouse, you produce a straight line. So that's how you can make more precise works. Now the most important thing to remember in making Algadoo things is that you glue your items to the background. Um, first off I'm going to um, delete this bottom here. and I'm going to hit play. So notice I didn't do anything to these objects, I just made them. Watch what happens. They just fall. And that's not going to work for a marble race if things just fall. So what you do is you right click the object you have made. You can see you have a lot of features. You can erase it. You can clone it, which means to make something exactly the same. You can mirror it, making it um, the same, only switch to one side. You have a selection. You can follow the object along the screen. You can change its color in the appearance section. I can change this to red, I can change this to black, I can change this to blue. You can change what it is made out of. This is just default material. I can make it gold. I can turn it into ice. I can turn it into stone, any of these things. And I can affect the mass, the friction, the restitution, which means how much it will bounce when it hits a surface. Um, then there's more information here. But what I was going to say is, when you right click it, you go down to this says geometry actions and you hit glue to background. So I glued this to the background. I didn't glue this. Watch. This stays in place. The other things fall. That's the most important thing. Going to geometry actions and gluing your items to the background. That way they don't fall and you can actually make a race. The next tool is the eraser, which is the exact same thing as a brush. Of course, down here you can. Um, adjust the size of the eraser and the brush. Only this time if you click, it will erase everything you just made. So you can use this for like small trimming, like if you made something a little bit too big, you can like trim off the edges that you don't want. The next thing is the polygon tool, which is this little pointing finger. All you have to do is click and then trace something. So if I click and then trace a triangle, it makes a triangle it makes it to the most um, reasonable shape based on what I click. If I try and trace a rectangle, it turns it into a rectangle for me. Remember, if you're going to make the race, glue it to the background. All right, the next tool you have here is the gear tool. And it's fairly simple. All you have to do is click, basically, and it will produce the smallest gear with three gears. And then, if you move your uh, if you move your mouse out from the center, you'll get more gears. You'll get more teeth. Four, five, goes all the way up to seventy-two. 
Probably past that, 89. <laughs> okay. But most often you'll be dealing with fairly small gears. Six is the most common, I would say. And if you want to make the gear actually turn, all you have to do is right click the center axle, go to where it says velocities and axles, and then click on motor. That means that your gear will move. You can tr control the speed by RPMs, you can control the torque, and basically that means that your shape will now move. You can click it again, go back down to um, gears, you can hit reversed, which means it'll change direction, and that's the gear tool. As you can see down bottom here, I also have some things. The play button is obvious. This button, left arrows to go back, right arrows to go forward, and this is to go over the things that you have already done. All right, so now we have the square tool. All you have to do is click it, move something out, and it gives you a box. And always remember, glue it to the background. Same thing for the circle tool. Click, move out from that center, and you have an object. That's what you can use to make marbles if you aren't importing anything. So, the last two tools here are the ones I don't use very much. In fact, I'm not exactly sure what this bottom one does. Plane tool creates an infinite plane. Um, I'm not going to show you that, mainly because I don't really know what it does. And this other one is the chain tool creates ropes and chains. If I click on that, all you have to do is click, go out from a point, go in any direction, and it will create a chain that you can use that will be attached at the starting point. If you click down here, you see the settings, you can change it to using a rope. I don't use them, uh, them very much either. I would imagine they could be used as an obstacle in a marble race, but um, yeah, don't use them very much. In fact, I'm gonna delete some of the things we have here so they don't crowd up our screen. All right, so I'm running out of time for this first part. In fact, um, yes, I'm going to make this video three parts. Okay, so the series is now three parts. There will be more information coming out in part two. Let's finish up with these tools. This next one, I'm going to avoid this one because this is everything. This is the tool that does everything. This one here is the knife tool. All you have to do is click, and you can see it, there's a trace here. If you go through any object, it will cut it. It will slice it. Then you can erase certain parts of it or edit it in that way. If you hold down shift as you cut, it will be a straight line. Shift is the means of making things straight in this game. We have this tool, which is the, just basically the move tool. This is what allows you to highlight objects by tracing over them. And if you right click, it just allows you to move around along the screen. Then we have the um, drag tool. If I press play, you can see that some of these objects I did not glue to the background. Well, now that I have the drag tool, I can just click, and the object follows wherever I click. Then we have the rotation tool. I can click any object, spin it around, and it will rotate. I don't always need that tool because if I right click any object and hold the right click, I can also rotate it in the exact same manner. All right, so we have about a minute left for me to explain the last tool, which is the scaling tool. It's this diagonal arrow. You can click any object. You will see these little circles surrounding them. And when you click them and move to the right, left, up, down, or diagonal, you can make the object longer, taller, or both at the same time when you go diagonally to whatever extent that you need. These things down here are additional extras. You can make springs with this tool to any um, des um, length or desire. This tool is a fixation tool. So anything you click using this tool is fixated at a certain point. We have an axle tool, which you can use to make axles for any object. You can see I attached an axle right there. And laser pen tool, don't use that very much, but it shines a laser beam. And that's basically it. So that's it for part one. I will see you in part two, where I will be going over how you can import objects 
And if you found this video helpful to you, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.